another illustration of this polar tracking mechanism. If we right click and go to drafting aids and pick polar tracking, if we leave polar angle measurement absolute and set a polar distance step of 100 units, which in this environment is 100 millimeters, we'll OK it. So we're enabling that distance step. If we pick this line, we might for the sake of argument decide we need a screening wall in this zone through here and we could offset this line a defined distance. So we might want to use 400 millimeter blocks or some other standard unit. We click that line, we copy that line from there and as you, if you watch because polar tracking is on as we move up can you see that we're going up one click at a time 3.7 3.6 3.5 3.23 meters so if we do if at an angle of 90 so it's relative to the entity that we've chosen we click that and hit enter we've copied that or offset that line up there precisely 3 meters and then we could of course go modify and uh, extend pick that line as the edge and extend that one through there then if we wanted to copy each of these 230 millimeters off to the left to make a little masonry wall in that zone um, a double brick wall 230 millimeters wide might be one example so what you could then do is click drafting aids make this 230 and OK that and simply pick this line now and copy it and we can come from that end and come down here and as we as we move down in this direction um, if we get polar tracking I want that aha that's interesting because we've got the snaps on we, we don't actually see here's our polar tracking 690 460 230 come to here I want to come down and get that 230. The reason I can't get the 230 running this way is that you see the flyover has, has got us into that zone. So in fact I'll just go in that direction. So that's a 230 millimeter wall now on that side. So the, the flyovers can be a problem in this case. Let's right click drafting aids and object snap. We've got our grips on here. Uh, let's just put the end point and take grips off. Grips picks up lots of them so we've just got end point on now and um, let's click that line now and right click and copy pick it up from the end and as we come across in this direction we should be able to see our 230 but you can see that is a problem it doesn't appear and go in those steps of 100 and of 230 until we get to that side you see it's jumped down through there so there is uh, a little problem with your entity snaps when you're doing that we should try and fix that so drafting aids let's take off our object snap um, we will need, what will we try the end point one didn't work we'll pick midpoint that may work a little better put object snap on try that we click the line right click copy pick the midpoint now now we can come across 460 230 and click so there's a little bit of playing around to do to get that masonry wall in position we, of course we'd need to square it off there and square it off there and so on so you could you could extend let's do that now modify extend this being the boundary extend that line to it uh, extend again repeat that it and this is the boundary isn't it and bring bring that line out to it and now modify trim and pick our cutting edges we'll pick all of these lines as cutting edges and then we can knock off that one and knock off that one and zoom out so we've got the beginnings of our masonry wall and it's precisely 230 millimeters from one side to the other we can check that by zooming in like so information distance from the midpoint of that line to the midpoint of that line. That will be an angle. It won't give us 230, will it? Um, it certainly won't. It'll give us the wrong value because it's jumping. So again, you need to be careful. The midpoint of that left line is not the same as the other. To get an accurate measure, we'd really want to go end to end. So let's try that. Right click, drafting aids, end point, take that off, put it back on, information distance from the end there to the end there 
and we get a value of 11500. Now that needs some investigation. Uh, we're still going in our in our steps, aren't we? 23 to 14. So that's giving us the. Ah, it's not showing distance at all, is it? If we st start from that point to that point, um, I'll take the uh, right click, take drafting aids off, clearing all again, information, distance. This time I'll just click near to there and go across to there and I get 11433. So there's a multiplier going on in our distance measurement and it's probably the actual distance being multiplied by uh, 230. I've drawn a line from the end point of that line to the end point of that line where we were trying to measure before. I'll just wrap a box around that and select it, right click and go to properties and the length of that line is 230 so we were correct. What's giving us the problem at the moment is our length measurement and I think it's there must be some multiplier in action and it's giving us the wrong value and I will try and track that down. There must be an override somewhere in our information so if I go distance from there to there it's going from 13 one three five six is that value, and to there is nine nine three. So it's it's certainly some weird number out. There's a multiplier going on there, and I will try and track that down for you. Well, it turns out that we have found a little glitch in Garden Cat. There is an overriding factor um, that distance two thirty. Uh, 11 is reported as 11200 and if we divide it by the 230 we get a scale factor of 50 so there's an overlying multiplication factor of 50 going on in there I think that comes from our earlier version when we were sh assuming that we would organize this to be plotted out 1 to 50 so that's something we need to fix in the next version of Garden Cat so as it stands you cannot rely on the distance or presumably area because they'll all be multiplied by a factor of 50 our apologies. Well I'm now using a later version of GardenCAD and you will notice some changes here. We've got uh, a, a little set button, a no snap button, a distance and tracking. These now give you an opportunity to, if you require them, to get in the middle of something to get at your, your settings here. We can clear things like so. I'll leave grips on for the moment and we can turn on distance, that's that uh, step distance and we can turn on or off tracking just by doing that. So now things work nice and smoothly. We simply click that line, we right click, we copy it, we can find the midpoint there and you remember I've set my step at 2.30 so I can get 2.30, I'll roll in there so that you can see it, I can get a step of 2.30 quite easily and another step of 2.30 and so on. There's a I can go to double that at 460. So the gaps now, and we've fixed up the um, the distance one. So distance from that point there to that point there. If you look down in the command area, it's 460. If we then go distance from there to there, it adds another 230 and so on. So everything is working really nicely. But of course, we need these tools to be able to ring the changes as we are working.